Hello students, welcome to Periodontics, week one, part two of the lecture on chapters one through four. Chapter two covers the microscopic anatomy of the periodontium. Cells are the smallest structural unit of living matter capable of functioning independently. Cells group together to form tissue. The four basic types of tissue are epithelium, connective tissue, nerve tissue, and muscle tissue. Tissues are not made up solely of cells. A gel-like substance containing interwoven protein fibers surrounds most cells. This extracellular matrix which surrounds the cells is composed of tissue fluid, protein fibers, and ground substance. Its function is to hold the cells and tissues together and regulates the transportation of nutrients, electrolytes, and water in the tissues. The epithelial tissue is the tissue that makes up the outer surface of the body the skin, and lines body cavities such as the mouth, the stomach, and the intestines, mucosa. The skin and mucosa of the oral cavity are made up of stratified squamous epithelium, a type of epithelium that is composed of flat cells arranged in several layers. Epithelial tissue is classified by the shape of the cells and the number of cells in the layer. Cells of the skin and mucous membrane are stratified, which means several cell layers, squamous, which is flat cells, epithelium. A keratinized layer is a tough, resistant layer of cells on the surface of the skin. Non-keratinized epithelium acts as a cushion against mechanical stress and wear. Basal cells are the deepest layer of epithelial cells and are attached to the basal lamina which separates the underlying connective tissue from the epithelial cells. The cell junctions attach one epithelial cell to another. There is a wavy tissue boundary between the epithelium and the connective tissue. The cementum, dentin, alveolar bone, and pulp are specialized forms of connective tissue. The enamel, however, is an epithelial tissue. The epithelium does not have its own blood supply and receives nourishment from the blood vessels in the connective tissue. The epithelium connective tissue interface is the boundary of the epithelium and the connective tissue. It is composed of epithelial ridges that are deep extensions of the epithelium and connective tissue papillae which extend upward from the connective tissue into the epithelium. The function is to enhance the adhesion of the epithelium to the connective tissue and increase the area that the epithelium receives nutrients. Epithelial cell junctions are cellular structures that mechanically attach a cell and its cytoskeleton to its neighboring cells or to the basal lamina. Forms of epithelial cell junctions include desmosomes and hemidesmosomes. Desmosomes and hemidesmosomes bind the cells together in a fashion similar to Velcro so that they can function as a strong unit. A hemidesmosome is simply a half of a desmosome. Chapter 2, Section 2, Histology of the Gingiva. The gingival epithelium is a specialized, stratified, squamous epithelium that functions well in the wet environment of the oral cavity. 
the microscopic anatomy of the gingival epithelium is similar to the epithelium of the skin. The gingival epithelium may be differentiated into three anatomical areas. On the diagram to the right, OE stands for oral epithelium, which covers the outer surface of the attached gingiva and the free gingiva. SE stands for sulcular epithelium, which lines the sulcus. JE stands for junctional epithelium, which forms the base of the sulcus and joins the gingiva to the tooth. See figure 2.5 on page 27 for more information. The free gingiva and the attached gingiva are keratinized, and the sulcular epithelium, interdental call tissue, and junctional epithelium are not keratinized. The oral epithelium covers the outer surface of the free gingiva and attached gingiva. It extends from the crest of the gingival margin to the mucogingival junction. The oral epithelium is the only part of the periodontium that is visible to the unaided eye. The oral epithelium may be keratinized or partially keratinized, also known as parakeratinized. Keratin is a tough, fibrous, structural protein that occurs in the outer layer of the skin and the oral epithelium. In health, the oral epithelium joins with the connective tissue in a wavy interface with epithelial ridges. Sulcular epithelium is the epithelial lining of the gingival sulcus. It extends from the crest of the gingival margin to the coronal edge of the junctional epithelium. The sulcular epithelium is a thin, non-keratinized epithelium. In health, the sulcular epithelium joins the connective tissue at the smooth interface with no epithelial ridges. The junctional epithelium is a non-keratinized, stratified squamous epithelium at the bottom of the sulcus. It attaches the tooth to the gingiva. Epithelial attachment is the mechanism that actually joins the junctional epithelium to the tooth. The junctional epithelium plays an important role in periodontal health. It is about 15 to 30 millimeter cells thick and tapers to 4 to 5 millimeters apically. The cells are flattened with the long axis parallel to the tooth. It has three surfaces two basal laminae, hemidesmosomes, and an internal and external basal lamina, dentogingival unit, and the dental pellicle. It functions to provide a protective barrier between the connective tissue and plaque biofilm. It attaches the gingiva to the enamel and or cementum and activates the body's defense system. In health, the junctional epithelium has a smooth tissue interface with the connective tissue, no wavy junctions. The presence of teeth creates a break in the epithelial protective covering. The junctional epithelium provides an attachment between the gingiva and the tooth surface, thus providing a seal at the base of the gingival sulcus or periodontal pocket. The epithelial cells of the junctional epithelium attach to the underlying gingival connective tissue via hemidesmosomes and the external basal lamina. The gingival connective tissue of the free and attached gingiva provides solidity to the gingiva and attaches the gingiva to the cementum of the root and the alveolar bone. The gingival connective tissue is also known as the lamina propria. 
The gingival connective tissue comprises a gel-like substance, protein fibers, and cells. Refer to figure 2.11 on page 33 for more information. Supergingival fiber bundles are located above the crest of the alveolar bone. They function to reinforce the attachment of the junctional epithelium to the tooth, brace the free gingiva firmly against the tooth, provide the free gingiva with rigidity, connect adjacent teeth to one another, and unite the free gingiva with the cementum of the root and alveolar bone. In health, the junctional epithelium is approximately 0.97 millimeters. The gingival fibers are approximately 1.07 millimeters in length. Combined, this makes up the biologic width. Please refer to page 33, figure 2-13 for more information. Classification of gingival fiber bundles. They are classified as alveolo-gingival, circular, dento-gingival, periosto-gingival, intergingival, intercircular, interpapillary, transgingival, and transseptal. The fiber bundles are known as gingival ligament. Their functions include protecting and supporting the junctional epithelium, maintaining the tone of the attached gingiva, and protecting the PDL. There are five principal fiber groups and six minor groups. All the bundles are discrete, although some of the fibers intertwine so that the gingival ligament supports its components. All are independent and provide coronal connective tissue attachment for the teeth. This concludes the lecture for Week 1, Chapter 1-4, through 4, Part 2.